We'll be right back with more Frankie Sloss Show Summer here at the top of the hour, right here on KTEC. He, he uh, exercised. He watched. Uh, he, he was a deeply religious man. Uh, watched his weight real close and blood pressure and all that. So an artist that are, that are saying it's kind of like a We Are the World type thing. Oh sure. If you if you remember go, you know. So yeah. Uh, fate to come along. He would have been back in nineteen fifty. Oh no! Uh, you were supposed to call me at, at ten o'clock my time, and it's ten forty-five right now. Uh, okay, but, I, but I that's had okay. 11 o'clock your time, so. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry about that. No, that's okay. Uh, well, I appreciate uh, the fact that you uh, took the time to call it or any th- oh, anyway. No problem, Sean. Glad to do it, buddy. Oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, for those of you who are wondering uh, who this. Uh, who uh, my first guest is. We were waiting for his call, but now we, we know that uh, everything's all good. Uh, it's none other than Mr. Michael Twitty, the son of the legendary Conway Twitty. And everybody knows Conway Twitty, and everybody knows the Conway Twitty story. So I'm very, very happy to have uh, you know you on the show there, Mike, to uh, you know kind of share some, some stories from your father and uh, also just kind of uh, uh, just... Uh, you know, just happy to happy to have you on. Well, thank you, Sean. It's my pleasure, buddy. I was things going up there today. Oh, they're they're going great. Uh, you know, we're here in Rapid City, South Dakota, uh, the home of Mount Rushmore, as you probably know. Yeah, absolutely. I've been through that gorgeous country. Lo- love it up there. Fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, when's the last time you actually been to our area? Oh, it's been. I haven't been up there probably in the last couple of years, but uh, I, I've been. Uh, through there several times. Okay, I've been to Mount Rushmore and everything. I can say it's gorgeous, just gorgeous. I, I love it. It's been too long. Got to get, got to get back soon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're always looking for great uh, people to w- do shows around here. We got a, a, a civic center here uh, that uh, does that has a full length history. I think your, I think Conway actually did perform w- once or twice here in Rapid City way back in the day. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I know he did. Uh, I remember when he went up there, because Dad went to Mount Rushmore also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, it, it's it's just kind of neat. I used to work at the Rushmore Civic uh, Center or Plaza Civic Center, and what what they have right now is like a history of kind of just like a year to year history of pictures of all the people that they've had perform there, and it's just uh, it's just an amazing uh, uh, amazing wall uh, of stuff. That's for sure. Uh huh. But uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was, nothing. I was just saying that Dad did shows all all over the world. You know, uh, all over the United States, all over all over the planet, really. And uh, but no matter where where he performed, he, he, I heard him talk many times. Say, you know, we really got the, some of the most beautiful sights on this planet are right here in our, in our country, United States of America. And I know Mount Rushmore was one of them because I heard him talk about it. Sure, sure, sure. Well, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I I. Uh, I've I've always been a big fan of your dad, you know, as as many people have. Uh, the legacy that he's uh, brought into the music industry has always been, you know, always something good, and it's always kind of neat. See, I'm I'm the type of guy. I'm not I'm not always in, into all the hits because I've heard all the hits all the time, and I know the hits are yeah. what makes I know the hits are what makes the man, so to speak, or makes the musician. But I always like to do I like to dig into the to the, the person's uh, musical uh, biography, so to speak, and uh, if I can find a rare song uh, that that like somebody uh, like a song that your father has done, uh, normally I can find that pretty easily thanks to the internet. And I'm always I'm so amazed by all the stuff that he has done in his you know through the whole time that he was with us. Right. Yeah, uh, he, he started out in rock and roll music, you know, back in 1956, and uh, he, he was very fortunate. I think he was, he was ex- excellent, had a lot of talent, but uh, every song he ever released charted. It, you know, um, that, that's not many uh, entertainers can say that, but even, even his first single, I Need Your Lovin', back in 1956, uh, it charted. Didn't go number one, but it charted, you know, so he, he was a, he was very fortunate in that area, but he, Dad always said he did it. The main, if there's any so-called secret, was he always picked good songs that radio people liked. You know, and uh, it was a song that made the singer not the other, other way around, according to him. Uh, I think he undersold himself a little bit there, but uh, he always put the emphasis on always pick a good song. Oh, you know, sure. he said there's a lot of great, a lot of great singers out there, but, but very few great songs. So always, 
always pick a good song, you know, and a good song that radio people like yourself will like and, and, and the fans will like. And so he, he had a kind of a golden ear when it comes to picking the correct song to do it and, and the right time to do them. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And it seems like he always just, you know, when it comes to making music, he was just, he just had, had a knack for it. You know, he he just he definitely just, uh, uh, you know, whether it was a voice or whether it's just a look or, or something, I mean, it, he just kind of, he just had it. And, and, That's true. And he released songs in five different decades. A lot of people don't realize Conway Twitty was the only artist that had songs in five different, number one record, certified number one record, excuse me, in five different decades, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And when you think about how the music changed from the 1950s, how, how many times it changed to the 1990s, and he just changed right along with it. He just rolled with the flow. Uh, very, very intelligent man when it comes, he always had his finger on the pulse of music and and, and uh, he said it was very important when it when it changed he just changed right along with it you know oh yeah and and uh, he, he you're, you're right he was a, he was a, a super well they call it the best friend a song ever had and I think that title fits real well yeah and and uh, you kind of known as uh, the best friend of song or let's see what's your take on it again the best friend of song uh, best, or go ahead the best yeah yeah the, the best dad a son ever had uh, uh, he, he was that too. He was that too. I mean, we didn't get because of what he did for a living. We didn't get a lot of a lot of time to spend together. But but when we did, he made sure it was all super quality time. I mean, we went to a lot of baseball games together. Uh, that was one thing that comes to mind because my dad loved baseball. In fact, he was going to be a professional baseball player. Oh wow! Uh, he actually got drafted drafted by the Phillies uh, before he could report to to their farm system. Uh, he got drafted by Uncle Sam. Had to go off and play soldier for a few years, so that kind of knocked that in the head. So his first love was baseball, and like I said, had it not been for fate to come along, he would have been a professional baseball player instead of a singer. But uh, I'm kind of glad. I'm kind of glad things worked out like that. Everything worked out for the best, I think. Oh yeah, and you know you hear about that a lot with a lot of entertainers who uh, try other things, and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But I think with your dad, I think he probably could have been a professional wrestler, and it kind of it probably would have worked for him. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was a he was a really good baseball player. I, I've seen a lot of the write ups and stuff. And uh, my grandmother, my dad's mom, had a bunch of clippings from the sports pages and stuff talking about him. He was he was really he was really excellent baseball player. Oh yeah, uh, it would have been nice to see some tapes or something. Or I, I, do you guys got like uh, like any archives besides the clippings? You got any like uh, any video tapes or audio tapes or or just something? Well, to... There wasn't such thing as video tapes back then. <laughs> We, we really all we got is a bunch of still pictures. We don't really have any any. Uh, I don't even think there was movie cameras back when Dad was you oh, know, sure. playing. But but there, uh, we got a lot of still pictures of him in his baseball outfit and, and you know at the plate and in the field and different stuff. It, but uh, no, we don't have any tapes or, or film or anything. Oh okay, yeah. I guess I should have thought about that. You know, just that uh, you know back in the day there was you know <laughs> we don't have yeah. they didn't have what they have now. You know, geez, I mean that's if we... true. No, not even close. <laughs> We're so lucky now, I'd say. But uh, absolutely. But uh, for for you, uh, what have you been uh, doing lately in your uh, musical uh, musical career? Well, I've been. Um, I started out in 1972 when I moved to Nashville, and uh, over the years, I've recorded for MCA, Capitol Records, Gusto Star Day Records. Uh, I've done shows in every state in the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. I've, I've been all over the world. I've been. One one into Canada, the other been all over Europe, Germany, France, uh, England. Um, I've been the, just everywhere. As the old song said, I've been everywhere, man. Uh, so, and I love to travel. I love to see new places and meet new people. So uh, I've been very fortunate. You know, Dad, something else he always said: if you can do something for a living that you really love to do and you can make a living at it, don't make a difference how much money you make. You're a successful person. And oh, uh, I've been an entertainer, entertainer now for 42 years that I really love and enjoy doing, and uh, I've been able to make a living at it, so I consider myself uh, a very fortunate, successful person, because uh, uh, I've been doing it 42 years, and I'm still going strong, so uh, I enjoy what I do, and, and I'm good at it. I, mean, oh, I know cool. I am, because all, all the setting ovations, I get everywhere we go, you know, so yeah, uh, it's it, it's been a good life, and I'm still, I'm still plugging along, doing great, so... Uh, uh, we're, to answer your question, what we're doing now, we're still uh, we're working on a new album when I'm off the road, and then uh, still traveling all over doing doing shows and stuff. Oh, that's cool. 
uh, on, on a, a, a platform called Spotify. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. Or not. It's a Facebook ki- kind of app or whatever. They have you, one of your albums on on uh, Spotify called the uh, Debbie D- Don't Do Dallas Anymore album. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I've been familiar with that. I've been listening to a few of the, the songs off that. I you watch the uh, the music video from that uh, song as well, and uh, that's kind of a catchy catchy little tune. No, thank you. That, that was written by Royce Porter, uh, one, of, one of the best songwriters in Nashville, and a good friend of mine. Royce wrote a lot of hits for George Strait, Oceanfront Property, uh, It Ain't Cool to Be Crazy About You, What's Going On In Your World. Uh, he wrote Mine in Miami for Keith Whitley. So the man's a great writer, and, that, and that's uh, one of the tunes that he wrote, the Debbie Don't Doubt Anymore tune. And uh, it, it, was a, it did great for me on, on CMT. The video did uh, got voted into heavy rotation just by fans uh, requesting it. So it, it did real good for me. I'm proud of it. So other than the love for music, what uh, is there anything else that you like to do that uh, that you're passionate about that you can either make a little money off of or just do because you like doing it? Oh, I do. I've done several different things. Uh, I've, been, I've hosted a, a TV show out of Dallas, Texas, called Country Countdown, where every week we would count down the top videos in the nation. Uh, that, that's been some years ago, back in the 90s. Hosted that for about three years. That, that was a hoot. I enjoyed that. Learned a lot. Um, got a new project that we're fixing to work on. There's a new TV show called The Sparrows coming out in, in the fall. The sure. Sparrows. And I'm going to be singing on, uh, on, on the uh, theme song for the show. <clears throat> me, me and several other country music artists. And, and there's going to be a, a, an album released uh, with with all these different artists that are that are singing, it's kind of like a We Are the World type thing. Oh sure. If you if you remember that type of thing, and uh, but uh, we're going to be doing that uh, coming up. But in all, well, we're going to be recording it in August, and it'll be out uh, with the fall the fall TV uh, schedule, which will come out. Start I think it'll start in September. Everybody will be seeing it. Uh, it's called the Sparrows. I want everybody to be looking for that. Oh wow. <laughs> that, that that that'll be my next big project coming up. Oh cool. Cool. Uh, excited but, about that. That's yeah, cool. yeah. I, I can definitely say, uh, you know, any time that somebody offers you a gig or 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 just anything that where when it comes to something you love, you know, you might as well go yeah. for it because you yeah, know, because somebody else and will take off, it from you. Yeah, right. Absolutely. On my off time, Sean, I, I'm a big scuba diver. I love to go scuba diving, and uh, I love, of course, any kind of sports. I love baseball, of course, like my dad, and uh, football. Uh, real, real big in the sports, uh, playing as well as watching. So I try to stay active as I can, you know. Uh, and the, between the, the, my traveling schedule and, and uh, doing projects like I talked about, that Sparrows thing, and, and then what little time I get to scuba dive and go to sporting events, it keeps me pretty busy. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So life's been pretty good for you. I mean, even even with the passing of your father, I mean, it, I know back, obviously back, you know, when it happened, I'm sure it probably was the most devastating thing in your life, you know, at that time. But you've learned to 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 well, you don't really move on from stuff like that. But you just you you just kind of learn to 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 know that your father will always be looking after you no matter what, you know. And and yeah, uh, he I'm sure would would expect nothing of the less of just the fact of uh, that you that he'd want you to have a good life even after he was. You know, long gone and stuff, and it seems like uh, seems like that's uh, kind of happened for you. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it was devastating. That was June the fifth of nineteen ninety three when that happened. Uh, but it's you know it caught it caught the whole world by surprise, by surprise, especially those of us in his family that knew and loved him because he was such a healthy man. I mean, he dad was an extremely healthy man. He 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 never drank a drop in his life. He he uh, he smoked, but he quit that like twelve years before he passed away. Uh, he, he uh, exercised. He watched. Uh, he, he was a deeply religious man. Uh, watched his weight real close and blood pressure and all that. So it, you know, it's just it caught us totally by surprise. He was healthy as he could possibly be. Just had a full physical about three months before. Passed it with flying colors. Everything. And for that to happen, that abdominal aortic aneurysm just 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 shocked shocked us all greatly. You know, as, as it did the world. But it, it caught those of us close to him. It caught us just as by, much by surprise too. Just nobody saw it coming, you know. So uh, it's not something you get, it's not something you get over. You just learn yeah. to, you know, live with it as, as time passes. But uh, it, it's still, as I look back on it now, it's still by far one of the most shocking things that's ever happened to me in my life. Yeah, to lose dad like that. I just never. It, none of us ever dreamed it would ever happen. You know. 
Oh, yeah, especially that young, you know, 59 years old. I mean, he was only, what, a couple months away from turning 60? Right, exactly. Yeah. And and I'm, I'm 60 now, so, you know, <laughs> one of the things the doctors, doctors told me, those aneurysms tend to be very her- hereditary, so I'm, I'm having, trying my best to keep a close eye on that, you know. Oh, sure, oh, sure. <laughs> so you were only been about 40 at that time when he when he passed away. So it was like I, a... I was I was 39, about to turn 40, just like Dad was 59, about to turn 60. Oh, so you just turned you just turned sixty just recently then? Uh, yes, I, I turned sixty last November. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm I'm a young guy. I'm thirty years old, but I grew up, you know, the old school way. You know, I grew up with old music. You know, with classic country, rock and roll. Hell, I grew up loving Buddy Holly. I mean, Buddy Holly was one of my first major artists that I I grew up loving. Now, how, how, what would you say for that for somebody who's thirty years old who grew up loving like Buddy Holly and stuff like that in today's world? I like. I think that's fantastic, man, because I grew up loving Buddy Holly, you know, because Dad was in rock and roll music. Dad did a lot of shows with Buddy back in the day. Oh, yeah. Uh, before before we lost Buddy, too, you know. And so, I, I mean, I still today love that old rock and roll music. I think it'll be around forever. I really do. Yeah. I know it's fantastic. And to meet somebody as young as you are and still dig it, that, that, that kind of proves my point, you know, that that music will never die. Oh, absolutely. You say you're 30 not. years old? Yep. Yep, and you love and you love that, that. That just shows right there. Proves my point. That music is so good; it stands the test of time. You know. Oh, I'm all about yeah. the old school, man. I, I tell you, I, 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 I dig it. I get into it. You know, my radio shows are all about old school, bringing back the days of pop culture, bringing back the old days of having fun on the radio. I'm not a top forty uh, radio DJ. In fact, I don't even get paid to do the radio DJ stuff. I'm just a volunteer. I'm just somebody who just loves what I do, and I just, uh, you know, I believe in, in bringing back the days of the good old days, like like the days of Alan Freed or Wolfman Jack, or you know, the stuff that's yeah. lost out there, you know. Yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff myself, man. I, I, that's fantastic. I'm glad to hear you say that. No? Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, I've always been old school, and I always will be old school. You know, I, I will change a few things that I do here and there in my life, but not too much because, you know, to, in today's world, you know, with the way things are, you know, you, you, I want I, I want to be the type of person that w- wants to put a smile on somebody's face at the end of the night after a show's done, just like how you would do at a concert or whatnot. You put a smile on somebody's face, no matter what type of mood a person's in. If they listen to you, they're going to probably more likely enjoy what you're doing. So that's why you keep on doing it. Uh huh. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it goes goes back to what Dad's talking about. You know, uh, do something you really love to do, and 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 pick the songs right. Uh, your music will be around forever. You know. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, what? Uh, well, I, I just got a couple more questions to to ask you before I let you go. Uh, what are, are some of your favorite songs that your dad uh, did in his career? I don't know. You know, I get asked all the time, what's your favorite song that your dad ever did? And I always say all of them. I mean, the man had 103 albums. If you were to sit down and listen to every song on every album, you'd never hear a bad song. Uh, but I guess if I had to pick some of the ones of my favorites, uh, for sure it's only make-believe would have to be, you know, number one, because that, that's the one that got the ball rolling for dad. Oh, sure. Back in 19, 1958, you know, he'd, he'd been in the business for a few years and nothing was really happening, no big song. And uh, he was kind of getting discouraged, but this song came along. He wrote it himself up in Canada, in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And uh, it became such a monster in 1958. Uh, it totally, he he had some thoughts about quitting music and going into something different, you know, because nothing was happening. So this song came along and kept him in the music business. So I'll always be grateful for that song for, for that, you know, <laughs> keeping it with us so we could have all those 55 number one records and 103 albums and all that. So if I had to pick a favorite, it'd probably be it's only make believe. But uh, you know, and of course, of all the fifty-five one records, the ones that Dad wrote himself stand out the most to me. A lot of people don't realize what a great songwriter he was. Oh, uh, sure. He wrote "Hello, Darling." He wrote uh, "Lend on My Mind." He wrote "You Never Been This Far Before." You know, songs like that, ones that he actually wrote himself, uh, would be in, in my in my top ten for sure. Oh, it's only make believe probably. It's only make believe would be at the top of the list. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. And, and uh, pretty much the last question, I guess, that I have for you is, uh, what do you think uh, uh, What do you think your dad's legacy is going to bring, you know, up in the next, you know, 10 years or 20 years? I mean, he obviously his music's going to live forever, you know, for gen- generations to come. But what do you think uh, the younger generation would think of his music if they gave it a shot to listen to? 
Well, I don't know. So, you know, when we're out there on the road doing our, and our show is called Memories of Conway, I, I, uh, we go around not only dad's music, but stories about his life and things like that. My son, his grandson, Trey, is, is on the show, uh, which people really dig. Uh, but we, we get crowds at the shows of all ages. I mean, I'm, it just blows my mind that we get kids there 10, 12, 15 years old really, really loving Conway Twitty, you know. Oh, and uh, that makes me feel so good because here again, just like we was talking about yourself, I'll go being uh, as young as 30, but still loving uh, the old the old style music. Here, these kids come out that you know only 12, 15 years old, and just loving Conway Twitty music. That shows me that his music will never die. You know, it'll always be it'll always be around. Oh, and yeah. uh, I'm hoping that that one day we'll have a, a movie out of, out of uh, Hollywood. You know, a Con- the Conway Twitty story, kind of like the Johnny Cash. Deal, oh sure, and a few others, you know. So, uh, and that's something that we're me and my I, I got one brother and two sisters, and we're working with some people right now on, on a possibility of that that very thing happening. You know, I think that would be great. Oh yeah, that would so be awesome. We're, we're definitely not only myself. I'm I'm the only ones out there touring and, and keeping his name and likeness alive out there in front of live people. But uh, the, the four of us have an outfit called Conway Twitty United, and that's what we're dedicated to to doing any, anything and everything that. That helps keep the name and memory of Conway Twitty alive. Oh, absolutely, and and I think uh, I think you guys are doing a good job uh, keeping that going. And uh, I just wish you the best of success, you know, even for the future. Because uh, the longer you can do this, hey, the longer you know, the longer life is exciting, I, I suppose. And and you know, why retire when when you can do something that you love to do? Hey, absolutely, uh, Sean. You're exactly right about that. Uh, I'm going to be up tor- towards your way in Fort Yates, North Dakota. Do you know where that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, actually reading that on your website about uh, there's like a casino in North Dakota that you're going to be doing with uh, Merle Haggard's son and Charlie Pride's yeah. son. Yeah. Right. Now, I'm looking forward to that. It's not going to happen to December, December the 20th, but that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to that, working with Marty Haggard and, and uh, Charlie Rich Jr. Uh, that's going to be a blast. It's a place called the Prairie Nights Casino. And oh, resort. sure. And, uh, Very nice. And, and uh, you have a website that people uh, can, uh, can uh, yeah. search for you. Yeah, they can keep, yeah, they can keep up with my tour dates and all that. It's michaeltwitty.com. Okay. All it's right. Very, very simple. michaeltwitty.com. Oh, yeah. My videos. I've got my videos on there and some music and uh, all my tour dates and then and what's going on in my career lately and all that stuff. I think people keep up with that. I'm glad you brought that up, Sean. Oh, hey, no problem. Happy to happy to do that for you. And, well, I just say I just want to say thanks uh, for taking the time to call me. Even though we got our times kind of mixed up, but hey, I'm so happy <laughs> that you called anyway because I I would have hated to have to reschedule again. You know, <laughs> no, no problem, Sean. I'm, I'm glad glad we had a chance to visit a little bit, buddy. Yeah, no problem. And uh, thanks again for uh, being a guest here on the Frankie Slauson Show, and uh, uh, much success uh, in the future.